morning, everyone. Hey, good morning, everyone. Maybe you didn't recognize me because this coat. I'm taking us up to the glory. Do you feel the glory? Okay, maybe not, maybe not. Well, why don't you stand up and greet somebody? Find somebody you don't know, say hi to them. Figure out their name. Where they're from. morning. Good morning, you guys. So good. I just got back from, uh, how many of you ever heard of Dave Ramsey? Anybody, do, is any, do any of you guys follow Dave Ramsey? Shh, sorry. Any of you guys follow Dave Ramsey? Yeah, so I went to one of his leadership summits. It was so exciting. And uh, we were there, I was there for three or four days. And uh, this lady, was one of the one of the sessions where this lady was the first woman to ever lead a expedition to climb Mount Everest, and she told this crazy story. I'll tell, tell you one part of it. It takes it took them two years to prepare, and it takes two months to climb Mount Everest. They get they get uh, almost to the top, and an avalanche happens, and uh, she's like with these other three women, and a guy is a photographer with another group, yells out, stand still, because they're running down the hill. He says, stand still, and the avalanche stops five feet in front of them. She hears, the lady who did the, the expedition, she hears him on the radio a year later, like she doesn't know him. And he's telling the story of climbing Mount Everest, his story of climbing Mount Everest. And he said, yeah, there was an avalanche, and he said, I saw these these four ladies and they start, they were running down the, the hill and I told them to stop and they stopped and he said, why'd you tell them to stop? She said, well, I, I just figured we're all gonna die, so why run from it? <laughs> Th this is the lady telling the story. She's like, I thought he had some kind of prophetic word, but he said to stop because there's no sense running and then this, the avalanche stopped right in front of him and uh, it was the craziest, craziest, craziest story. And uh, she climbed it in 2003, got 700 feet from the top, and there was a storm. And anyway, she had, should we go to the top and die? And by the way, there's frozen people along the way. That, uh, <laughs> yeah, so it doesn't encourage you to go up. <laughs> 700 feet from the top and decided that it would be better to live and not quite make it. And then her friend, who uh, actually died of cancer, she was Olympian, said to her on her deathbed, you can't fail. You have to go back and finish this. So in 2008, she went back and climbed 300 feet from the top and, the, and a storm broke out. And she's like, unbelievable, unbelievable. And the storm was going and she hears a voice in front of her, like 100 feet in front of her saying, you must finish this. And it's a guy who she didn't see who's climbing in front of her, who evidently knew her story and said, you have to finish. And so she, she spent eight more hours flying, climbing that last 300 feet, and she made it. And so anyway, it's this crazy story. So I don't know what you're doing, but it's going to be a good day, full of hope today. So uh, let's just, let's just, uh, let's just, can we just clap for the Lord today? It's a great day. Okay. I got them all warmed up. You guys ready to go? God bless, bless you.
second. I got the wrong in here. I got the wrong pack. We gotta switch this. Give me a second. It's not gonna work out. They gave me her in here and it was, uh, she was super loud. Okay, check, there we go. Can we try it again?
sing it out even when
promises never fail Your promises never
Lift up a shout of praise to the Lord. Lift up shouts of praise. Lift up shouts again. Lift up shouts again. Lift it up. favorite things. Uh, I was in uh, Greenville uh, here uh, a month or so ago and in the hotel I was staying at they had these large, I guess they're called geodes, these large rocks. They're ugly as can be on the outside. You crack them open and they've got the most amazing you know, purple and yellow and green crystals. All It's just extraordinary. That's, I call those revival rocks because you got to get on the inside to know the treasure that's there. You'll never spot it from the outside. I remember, I was thinking earlier this morning, I remember November 1989. We had a men's retreat here. I was still pastoring in Weaverville. And we brought a bunch of men down, stayed at one of the uh, hotels on Hilltop. And... Uh, and I remember there was a break and I went to my room and I turned on the news, which I don't do anymore. I'm allergic to it now. I break out in, I break out in hives. I turned on the news only to watch a huge segment of the Berlin Wall removed and people were marching through probably by the thousands. Wow. It's the fall of the Iron Curtain. I'll never forget that event. I'll never forget that day. I'll never forget standing there, stunned at people that were filing through not a very large segment of the wall that was released at that time. And they were singing. They were singing, this is the day that the Lord has made. <laughs> this, they, they were singing. They were coming from East Germany into West Germany, and they were singing. This is the day that the Lord has made. Listen, the one who spoke the worlds into being designed this day, making available for you and for me every single thing we would need for this day to be a glorious day, a successful day. He thought of everything. Most of life catches me by surprise. Nothing catches him by surprise. He already set it up. There's not one thing that you and I will ever face that, we, that he will look at and say, oh man, if I only would have taken care of that on the cross, I just completely forgot about it. Yeah. Nothing, because he took care of everything. Everything. Jesus made the most astonishing announcement in his ministry. He actually repeated what John the Baptist started with. He made this decree to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He announced to an entire planet, change the way you think because I brought my world with me and it's within reach. You'll have to adjust your perspective to access what I made available. And I pray for that for you and me today. I want you to pray for the person on your right and left. Put a hand on their shoulder, however you want to do it, grab their hand. In some way, I want you to pray that this would be the day 
of great discovery, that this would be the day of great discovery, as though they just tapped into a big gold vein in a gold mine, that this would be the day of great discovery. Announce over them, this is the day the Lord has made. He had you in mind when he designed this day. He left nothing unfinished. Put your hand on your own heart, and I, I want to pray over you as we wrap this up. There's this phrase that just went through my mind here just a moment ago. Trust begins the adventure. And I feel like, I, I just want to pray that today would be the beginning of a new adventure to discover the richness of every day he created, every day that he made. So, Father, I pray for that. And we just confess out loud, we trust you. Say it with me. We trust you. Father, we trust you. Say it with me. Father, we trust you. That this day would be a day of rich, rich discovery. I pray this for the honor and the glory of the name Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, so good, so good, so good. All right. You're standing around a whole bunch of good people. Bless them good. Find your seats. Wow, 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 what a morning. I love that it's the first uh, Sunday in June, the start of a great summer. As you guys make your way back to your seats, if you have a seat next to you that's available, would you lift your hand up so that we know anyone who needs a seat uh, can find one next to you? And yeah, thank you guys. Thank you for lifting your hand. Anyone with their hand up uh, is welcoming you to come sit next to them if you still need a seat. And if we fill the sanctuary, we have great room open as well. Anyone needing a seat, look for a hand raised and you'll find one, or you can go across the hall to our great room. The next group uh, that I'd love to acknowledge, if you are in our service for the very first time, would you wave at me? Yes, hello, welcome. We're so glad to have you. Welcome to Bethel. Keep your hands raised. Our ushers are gonna bring uh, a card where we'd love to connect with you. And then at the end of the service, if you go to the South Lobby where I'm pointing in that direction right now, if you go to the South Lobby, our team would love to meet you, to minister to you through prophecy and just welcome you more formally. Um, and online, put it in the chat. We love that you're with us for the first time. Welcome. I love this weekend because this is the culminating day, the final day of what we call Bethel Reading Weekend. If you got to be a part of Bethel Reading Weekend on Friday night and Saturday at the lake, would you give a round of applause? Was it great? I love it. We had, we had Dr. Michael Maiden with us on Friday night, deliver a powerful word. The lake was phenomenal. Gabe and uh, Shane Mandel, pastors here, got you out on the lake and had a great time. So we, I just want to take a moment. If you enjoyed it, would you celebrate the leaders who made that possible and the volunteers? Thank you guys so much. Yeah. And finally, I am holding what you should have gotten when you came in. It is our brochure about the summer activities. They are kicking off this month and inside you'll find all of the dates and information. But for details, you can go to the QR code in the back or Bethel.com slash summer and get more information. We would love to spend the summer having fun with you and your family. And um, the rest of the details will be in our Sunday uh, announcements. So check this out and check this out. Bless you.
Hey Bethel family, we've been having an amazing time at this year's Bethel Reading Weekend. Dr. Michael Maiden's been here. It's been so much fun. We had a killer day yesterday at the lake. Hope you got to come. We had boating, lots of stuff, barbecue, families all over the place. It was so much fun. And then Friday, oh man, after the service, line dancing, bull riding. Come it was on. so cool. <laughs> did you line dance? I did not line dance. <laughs> I did not either. But you know what? I just love being able to eat and swim and just even Friday night have an encounter together. So it's been a phenomenal weekend and I hope that you all enjoyed it because we wanted you to have an incredible time. Listen, we have lots of information, but first we're gonna start with this week's church news. I don't know if you've heard, but Champions Business Leaders is a monthly gathering for kingdom business leaders and entrepreneurs. It's led by our very own Ahab Alhindi. This month, the incredible Steve Backlin will be joining and we'll learn how to build a culture of empowerment in our business and connect with other leaders just like you. There's no registration required, but you can learn a lot more at Bethel.com slash church news. Join Ben Armstrong and Lindsay Ryman for a fun and engaging prophetic activation online. In this two and a half hour class, you will gain biblical foundation for the prophetic. You'll be activated in giving and receiving prophetic words for yourself. We've got some amazing opportunities this summer to invest in your relationships. First, if you're single, check out Single Life Workshop July 5th through the 8th. This four day intensive will give you the tools you need uh, to build healthy, thriving, meaningful relationships in every area of your life. And then Love After Marriage is happening July 31st through August 4th. Love After Marriage helps couples connect deeper so they can experience the kind of marriage they've really, really hoped for. Learn more and register at Bethel.com slash events. Well, everyone, that is it for this week's church news. If you missed any of these announcements, visit Bethel.com slash church news. I've never used this before, so I'm very nervous about using a microphone. I'm teasing. Hello, guys. Uh, I, welcome to Bethel. I, I just officially arrived. It is offering time, so we are going to get ready to give. And uh, if you'll stand with me, that would be awesome. You know, worship doesn't end after announcements. Worship actually continues as we give. And I want you guys to understand, we don't talk about that this often, but Tithe, giving God the first fruits of what he gives you is not an act of tipping God. It's an act of saying all of it is yours anyway. I'm giving you a percentage, uh, a first fruits of my, of what I've received out of my labor to say you are worthy of it all. You, you gave me, how many of you have been invoiced on the oxygen that you use today? How many of you were, were invoiced on the sky or the sun? No, we've all been given enormous amounts of generosity. And so when we give to God, we tithe not just because we tip God, but we tithe because we say it's a sign of saying, you can have it all. It is all yours anyway. And I wanna make sure that you get the first fruits. And as a young woman, I did this very early on and it became so automatic that I have an automatic, just it goes to the church no matter what. And I, it's not about what I get to decide where it goes. It's about my act of obedience to him saying, it is all yours anyway. I remember this one time, this woman, beautiful woman took me out to a store and she said, I wanna buy you anything in this store. Um, I work here, I have a discount and I want you to just get whatever you want. So I got all this stuff, we wandered around. It wasn't an expensive store, but I gathered some things because I have four kids and I have too many kids to enjoy, you know, all the things I want. And so I, uh, I put it on the thing and at the end she's checking out and she's, she leaned over and she goes, you know, I don't tithe. I just take people out and I give them things at this store. I take them out and shop with them. And I understood her motive was, I want to be generous. But she missed the point because that first tenth is not hers to give. It's an offering in which we give to him. And when we give it to him, it's a sign of sacrifice. It's a sign of obedience. It's a sign that says before anything else. And so for many of us right now, we are in a financial battle. How many of you know it's not an easy time to give? That's when it counts. How many have been married? And it's the days that you don't feel like being married is the day that it counts. It's the day that you don't feel like parenting and you parent out of love is when it really matters. It shows who you are as a believer and as a follower of Jesus Christ. So they didn't ask me to preach this. This is a Havilah thing, but I wanna make sure I remind you. Now, offerings are over and above. So you, we give multiple offerings in our lives and we've been faithful to do that for many years. And God has been so good. I've never seen him We've never gone without. I mean, God has just been so good to us. So uh, what I wanna do is read offering number one to get today. And um, I don't know it by heart. I know that there are many ministers here that do, but I do not, so I'm gonna read it with you. Can we read this together? Okay, the five of us, how about all of us? Can we all read this together? All right, here we go. 
As we receive today's offerings, we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decreased, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs that I might have more than enough to give to the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Okay, take what you're going to give today, whether it's just you've already given it online, put your hand out in front of you just as a sign of like, okay, God, you get this. And Lord, we just say, Lord, you are worthy of it all. And we give you the first fruits of what you've given us. Lord, you have given us oxygen, air, uh, income, resources, time, talents. Lord, you are the great giver. And so, Lord, we take this moment today to say we will worship you in spirit and in truth. We worship you by obedience, by giving you what you've already given us. And we just thank you for your goodness and your generosity. And I thank you for those that are giving out of sacrifice today. Lord, you see it, it matters to you, and you have checks in the mail and gifts and surprises that are coming their way because they are doing it as an act of faith. And so we bless you. And everybody said amen, amen and amen. So if you are not used to giving or you're not sure how, there'll be buckets that'll be passed, or you can just uh, use the QR code and that allows you to uh, give online and it will give you all the documents for your future in giving. All right, you guys, that is it. Now, Pastor Bill. How many of you love Pastor Bill? Come on. Beautiful. That's the back. Going. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Be seated. Uh, what a very, very special weekend for us. Uh, how many of you were here Friday night to receive from Dr. Mater? So, so wonderful, so wonderful. And uh, you're about to be uh, treated again. But uh, just to waste a little time while the bags are being passed, I remind you of a funny story. A couple decided to have their pastor come over for lunch or dinner. And after he left, the wife turned to the husband and said, I, th I think he stole our spoon. And uh, really bothered her. They had him over again a year later, and she just couldn't keep quiet about it. She said, Pastor, by any chance, last year, when we had you over for dinner, did you steal one of our spoons? And he said, no, I just put it in your Bible. <laughs> how, how many of you think that, that may be the best one ever? I mean, it's just, it's just one of the best ever. We've had such a, a wonderful time this weekend. Thanks for all of you who helped uh, put it together. It was, uh, I didn't do any line dancing and I didn't ride the bull. No, no bull, no bull for me, no line dancing. But I did talk and hang out with people by fires and that sort of thing. We had such a wonderful time. Dr. Maiden has been uh, a personal friend for me and then of our house, for me for many years, and our house the last several. And I, I, there's very few people that have marked my heart as deeply with the prophetic and with their friendship as deeply as Dr. Maiden has. He's ministered to us uh, so, uh, such encouraging words, such prophetic decree and destiny. Uh, Friday night was just over the top. This morning, once again, I'm just thankful. I'm thankful for the chance to, uh, to be able to sit at the feet of this wonderful friend, wonderful man of God. I feed my soul on words that he says, and I do that on a regular basis. I would like for you to welcome Dr. Pastor... Prophet, friend, Michael Maiden. Welcome. Pastor Bill, we uh, are our, our building that we're in is in Phoenix. I pastor a church called Church for the Nations, and Pastor Bill graciously did our dedication service 14 years ago, and 10 years ago, he helped officiate my youngest daughter's wedding, 
And then a month ago, he came over as a surprise. My kids had organized it without really telling Mary or I to be a part of our 20th year church anniversary. And uh, so Pastor Bill is a huge part of our story. And for me personally, he's my hero in the faith. And so to preach at your hero's uh, church is nerve-wracking. So I'm just going to pretend he's not here. <laughs> just you and I. And we're going to have a, a great time. Well, I want to show you. I, I, you know, it's hard. For, I'm trying to gather myself because the worship just wrecked me. I don't know if, how you people handle this. <laughs> you, act like, you act like it's normal. I go, man, oh, man, I got to get together. I got to speak in five minutes. And, uh, man, I'm thank, by the way, thank you, worship team, wherever you are. And you guys, wow. I wanted to show you a, a picture of my little uh, tribe of uh, maidenites. And uh, this was from, uh, at our anniversary a, a month ago, um, we had our family come to our backyard. And the only thing I asked for them was a family portrait. So if you guys got that, you could throw it up there. There they are. Uh, so we have uh, four children, Mary, beautiful Mary and I, and uh, they're all married, and we have eight grandkids. I call them the great eight, and um, God is just so good. I give all the credit to Jesus and Mary for how good my kids turned out. You know, not that Mary, my Mary, for, you know, it's, it's a... <laughs> and uh, I was, one of the things that touched me, the Lord just reminded me that it was this month, June, and 20 years ago when I was on vacation with these lovely people, eight of them weren't there, but the rest of them were. And uh, I was diagnosed with this uh, stage four cancer in, in Laguna Beach, California. And as the doctor was going through the, the difficulty of treating it, which was, he said, which, you know, which was impossible, I could barely speak and I leaned across his desk and I said, I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. It's Psalm 118 verse 17. And it, it has stupefied the doctor. He said, what? I said, I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. And I'm just grateful. I had stage four cancer, and then six months later, no cancer, and 20 years later, no cancer. God's, God's kindness. And uh, in that group of people, the, uh, my, um, two of my grandkids, I think, are going to come to school here. So they're, they're both uh, seniors this next year in high school, and they're talking about coming to the Bethel School of Ministry. And so I'll be here, over here like every other weekend. You know, and it's just <laughs> sitting in the back, but hanging around with my, my grands. And uh, my grandkids only know a happy man. And uh, Jesus healed me from a clinical suicidal depression. And you know, uh, like 28 years ago, we were building a church and our treasurer embezzled a bunch of money, $20 million. And it was a massive scandal and it led to a personal depression. And our church grew from 5,000 to 140. That's, not, that's the wrong, that's the chart upside down. We had 10 front page stories and six lawsuits and 15 concurrent attorneys. And we're homeless for 10 months as a family, um, death threats and everything else. My son became a drug addict at 12 uh, just, tr you know, trying to treat the pain. And everything that could go wrong went wrong. I was 37, thought my life was over. Here, here's what I found out. When hope leaves, your heart gets sick. That's what the Bible says. Hope deferred makes your heart sick. Hope is the oxygen of the human soul. We just don't do good without it. We suffocate without it. But Paul said this in Romans 15. May the God of hope fill you with all joy joy and peace in believing, that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. God wants you to have so much hope you're contagious. This is a, this is a place where people that have lost their dreams dream again. You know your heart's healthy when it dreams again. It's time to dream again, my dear friend. Well, everything was tough for us, and, and the Lord did two things for me. He, he invited me to forgive the people that had hurt me. And um, he, he said, Michael, if you will forgive the people that have hurt you, I will make you forget the pain they've caused you. Forgiveness isn't just a requirement for believers to, you know, j just take it and, and, and live with constant pain. When you forgive people, your healing journey begins. There's no pain a person has given you that God can't heal. 
So you, you have to believe that. Jesus Christ healed me. So I made a list, I checked it twice. Everyone was naughty, no one was nice. And Jesus Christ, about four months, about um, eight weeks into it, he, he touched me at a God encounter. All the pain was gone, got gone. God filled me with love for people that had hurt me. And that's really a test. When you can love people that have hurt you, you, you know you're forgiven well. So I just wanna encourage you, you're gonna dream again. You're gonna hope again. And God's gonna help you in this season I talked about comebacks and Sunday nights, and we'll talk a little bit about now. But I just want to encourage you. My wife calls me Lazarus. And in our city, God gave us such a radical comeback that people come still 20-plus years later just to see the guy who was buried in the front page of the paper. And I had a public burial, but I had a public resurre resurrection. And I just, you know, it's always a, a divine setup when a crowd's gathered to watch your setback because God's gonna make them front row witnesses of your comeback. So God's, God's not done in your story. I tell people, don't give up. Give God the chance to write a good ending to your story. He has certainly helped and done that in my life. And my grandkids only know a happy poppy. Holy, I was watching the movie Frozen for the 85th time. Uh, 10 years ago with my two granddaughters. That was their, their thing, man. Every time I'm with them, what do you want to do, girls? We want to watch Frozen. I said, oh, lovely. I've only seen that 82 times. And they'd sit on both sides of me, and I couldn't even turn my head. Papa, you're going to miss what's coming. I know it's coming. I, I remember this part. And uh, there's a song in the Frozen called Let It Go. You know, if you watch it 82 times, you lay in bed and say, Jesus, please let it go. This... <laughs> song and uh, but in the New Testament the word forgive a thimmy means to let it go it's amazing what happens when we let it go and so I stand before you as a miracle and uh, my granddaughter Linda we were watching that movie for the you know the 80th time and she jumped she jumped in front of me grabbed my cheeks and squeezed she was four years old and said Poppy you're the funnest person in the whole world so this morning, you're honored to hear from the funnest person in the whole world, <laughs> at least according to my granddaughter, London Sierra Maiden. And, uh, but it's all a testimony of Jesus. It's, it's what he can do. You're not too broken. You're not too broken for him to heal. You haven't lost too much for him to restore. His love can heal anything it touches. And when we sing like today, we talk about his love and Remind ourselves to re-experience his love. It always heals. Oh, thank you, Jesus. For, I, for a few moments, I want to share a message called, You Are a World Shaker. Here I am at the world-shaking Bethel Church, preaching on world shakers. And in our text will be 1 Samuel chapter 14. If you have your Bibles, turn there. If you have a photographic memory, just turn there. However you follow along with this, let me share something funny before I, again, Heard about this mother and daughter, young daughter. They were leaving church. And the mother asked the little girl, what did you learn today in children's church? And she said, mommy, I learned today how God made men and women. And the mother said, that's great. Tell me how he did it. The little girl said, well, here's what happened. God reached down, grabbed a handful of dirt and made a man. And then he put the man to sleep, took out his brains and made a woman. <laughs> First Samuel chapter 14. Now what happened one day, the pastor began the service, this is the day. By the providence of God, we're together. You're here in Bethel because God wanted you here. That Jonathan, the son of Saul, said to the young man that bore his armor, come and let us go over to the Philistines' garrison that's on the other side. He didn't tell his father. Saul was sitting in the outskirts of Gibeah under a pomegranate tree, which is in Migron. And the people that were with him were about 600 men. And Hijah, the son of Ahitab, don't name your son Ahitab, Ichabog's brother, the son of Phinehas, the son of Eli, the Lord's priest in Shiloh, was wearing the ephod, but the people did not know that Jonathan had left. 
Now Jonathan's going, and verse, verse 4 says, what he faces between the passes by which Jonathan sought to go over to the Philistines' garrison, there was a sharp rock on one side and a sharp rock on the other side. The name of the one rock was Bozes, the other rock was called Sina. Now you're, you're a pretty significant rock when you got your own name. So these rocks were significant in their geological formation, but also they were significant because no one had ever gotten past them before. So no one had ever broke through. The front of one faced toward opposite Mishmash, the other opposite Gibeah. Jonathan said to the young man that bore his armor, verse 6, hey, Come and let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for nothing restrains the Lord from saving by many or by few. What a great line. God doesn't need everyone to believe. He needs one person to believe. His armor bearer said to him, Do all that is in your heart. Go then, here am I with you according to your heart. Jonathan said, okay, it's amazing what one person's agreement can do to your life. One person. If any two of you agree on earth as touching anything that they ask my father, it shall be done. So he says then, here's what we'll do. We'll have this fleece. I'll I'll shout up to the Philistines, we're coming after you. If they say to us, we're coming down to you, then we'll recognize God's not with us and we probably should retreat. If they say to us, come up here, we'll show you something, we'll take that as a sign from God. Now, this was really a setup from Jonathan because that was going to be what they would, they would not leave the, the safety of their superior position. So Jonathan was kind of making it easy to do this. Then the men of the garrison, verse 12, sure enough, called to Jonathan his armor bearer and said, come up to us and we'll show you something. Jonathan said to his armor bearer, come after me for the Lord has delivered them into the hand of Israel. That's all. People that trust God don't need four angels and three white doves and they're ready to seize the moment. And often in a negative moment, there's a prophetic positive confirmation. Jonathan climbed up, verse 13, on his hands and on his knees. It's amazing how high we can go when we're on our knees. With his armor bearer after him, and the enemy fell before Jonathan. And after him came his armor bearer and killed them. So they're running through. These two men climbed up these rocks. They were impenetrable. No one had done it. And they got there. They shocked them. Then they, shock and all, ran through 20 men. And Jonathan knocked them down and wounded them. The armor bearer following behind them and finished them off. Kind of like Pastor Bill and Chris. <laughs> Pastor Bill knocks them down and Chris finishes them off. This was the first slaughter which Jonathan and his armor bearer made. It was about 20 men and a half an acre of land. So this is a great victory. God won because two men were brave. It, it, it's amazing. Faith is interpreted as bravery to people living in fear. So they well, you're so brave. No, I have faith, and that faith makes me brave. Obeying God. It's courage that is born by faith. So there was a trembling. Here's the consequence of two men breaking through an impenetrable rock formation and facing an enemy where the odds were 10 against 1, 20 against 2. There was a trembling in the camp, a trembling in the field, a trembling among all the people. The garrison of the raiders also trembled. The earth quaked. So that was a very great trembling. So it was such a breakthrough, it broke the status quo. When you do things opposite, you're almost with me. There are people here going through such difficult moments, people watching, facing 
maybe the trial of their life, and yet they're worshiping God. When you worship God in a moment of pain and loss and conflict and adversity, you create a spiritual earthquake. You create a cognitive dissonance. And, and it's so unusual, it's so out of the normal that everything that's normal shakes. Someone just broke the pattern. Someone just broke the, the bondage. Someone just broke the, 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 the difficulty that we've been in. When you break through by doing the opposite, everything, let me say it like this. When you love people that have been hateful to you, you create an earthquake. At midnight, Paul and Silas, when you worship God while you're still bleeding from wounds, will you end the day in the worship that began with beatings, you create an earthquake. Yeah. When you can worship God for being good while you're going through something bad, you create an earthquake. You change the spiritual atmosphere. You, you, you shift things. And these two dudes shifted a whole generation by faith. It's amazing. They just said, let's do something. And, and Jonathan said this, let's believe God to do something. Why are we sitting here doing nothing? 600 men under a pomegranate tree playing poker. Come on. Drinking Bud Light, I'm sorry, d d d whatever they're doing. <laughs> Goofing off. They're imprisoned by the cowardice of their leader. And they're, and, and they, uh, you know, well, he's not doing nothing. We don't have to do something. And Jonathan, the son of that leader, broke the curse of his family. He said, I, I, I love my father but I'm not going to be like my father. I'm going to believe God. Let's do something. He, we're in a time in history when the church needs to do something. Okay. When they did that and the earth quaked, it went all the way over to that pomegranate tree. And, and Saul said, something's happened. Find out, and they asked the priest, and, and they finally, they said the Philistines are running for their lives. Two men were chasing a whole nation away. God was fighting with them. And so these 600 men became employed in the purpose of God in that moment because two brave men broke through. There's an army of people waiting for you to break through. When you break through, People that have been bound by apathy or fear, indifference or pain will get back up on their feet and go forward. And then the Bible says, it closes out this part, this story by saying, and all the men that were hiding in caves and holes came out of their caves and began to fight. All the people crippled by the imprisoning power of fear were set free by the faith and courage of two men that said, let's believe God to change the world. They didn't need a sign. In fact, they made it easy. They, they, they knew there was a just cause. I don't know the exact moment it happened when Pastor Bill and Pastor Benny got so hungry for God that they climbed up. They climbed past religious boundaries. Thus far may you come. It, it, they climbed back what other churches were experiencing. They climbed back out of the apathy and indifference and the compromise of the Western church. And, and, and two courageous people got so hungry for God, Pastor Bill said, Holy Spirit, take over. And you're living in the earthquake breakthrough that Pastor Bill Johnson and Pastor Benny Johnson began 30, 40 years ago, whenever it was. You're benefiting from their faith. Come on. <laughs> now, now here's my point. Why did, how many of you came from out of town to join this church? It's like the majority of you crazy fanatics. 
Why do you think God brought you here? Because you're called to do the same thing. You're called to start an earthquake. You are my friend, have come to the right place. You've come to the right place. And this church is entering a season of a freshness, a freshness of things happening. These next seven years, this next year is going to be a miracle year. It's not that there's been a, 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 a drought, but there's been a withholding. Everything withheld is being released to you. And there's going to be a financial breakthrough, $40 million this next year. Your pastor is, God has determined that Pastor Bill will have the sweetest season of his life. That God has saved the best wine for last in his story. And he's going to come up on the stage and, and things are going to pour out of him that he already is so amazing. But it'll come out and he say, man, oh man, that's the sweetest wine he's ever given us. Something good is happening in him, in you. In this moment. And why did God bring you here? Because God wants to shake the whole world. By the way, he's already shaking the whole world through Bethel, but he wants to do a little more of it. <laughs> Come on, Bethel worship. I don't know if Pastor Brian said, Bethel worship, shaking the world. Come on, I began this morning crying in my hotel room, just listening to Bethel songs for an hour straight. Oh my God, that one's great too. I forgot that. How good that <laughs> How did I forget that song? One after another, hit, everyone shaking me. The whole world shaken by the school of men. People come from around the world to come to your school of ministry. All over the nations, people, you're changing the whole world from Reading. My, my only complaint is, God, couldn't you made a city that's easier to get to? I, I, now, because, oh, you, oh yeah, you should have seen me Thursday night. My flight's delayed, I got a connecting flight. I'm running through the, it's an ugly sight. I'm running through the airport, God don't let me run anybody over. Gotta catch that flight. I, I get there, I'm sweaty. I get to the gate, and it's, oh, this flight's been delayed too. It's like the Lord said, I, I took care of this for you. You didn't have to sweat it out there, big boy, you know. I, I probably needed to work out, it's probably okay. God, till God picks a place that's even hard to get to, just to test people's level of hunger. Mm. Well, that's too hard to get to. You do, that's right, you don't belong here. <laughs> well, I, that came out harder than I thought it would. <laughs> you, you can still come when it's convenient. <laughs> that's even worse. Backsliding right in front of you. The Bible says this in Hebrews 11. So what, it, it, it's wrong to suppose that God uses Pastor Bill and Chris and everyone else, or me or anyone, that, oh, that's just God's predetermined, predestined call. Yeah, 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 there's a calling there. But it's their behavior that is now the calling to have its great reach of influence. Uh, there are lots of people carrying revelation or, or great preachers and teachers, but not a lot of people with the same level of hunger and faith as your pastor. Thank you, Pastor Bill. Like the armor bear, we all say, do all that's in your heart. Do it. Every vision. Now just think about, uh, so I come from the outside, and just think about the things you do. You think they're normal. The rest of us think you're not normal. <laughs> I've got to come here. There's the healing of schools. There's the school of ministry. There's the Bethel worship. There's Pastor Bill and Chris and the great teaching team. There's a women's ministry, men's ministry, youth thing. I mean, like, God, they got 40 great things. Just give me one great thing. You know, I, what, how come he's got 40? Just, I'm just asking for one. Just slide one over there. <laughs> it's not normal because this is a house where champions are raised up. 
And it, it's not just that Pastor Bill had the acumen to do all. No, he, he created the environment for these things. Jesus' culture, everything else, birthed here in this house of champions. So champions, what are you going to do? What earthquake are you going to cause? Oh, Pastor, you may not know my family. Perfect. Perfect. God wants you to use you to shake things up. You be the person. I was in Germany last week ministering, and I, and I prophesied to a young man, young German man, and, and, uh, and then after service, he came running up to me. He says, hey, hey, here's my testimony. He said, you prophesied to my sister like in, in Denmark four years ago. And midway through the prophecy, you start talking about her brother, which is me. And you said, your brother's going to be saved. He's going to be a great champion, a curse breaker, and a mighty man of God. He's, you know. and, and I wasn't saved back then. And I was fighting through the trauma of our family, and especially with our father. And my sister got me on the phone and played that prophecy. And when I heard what God said to me, it brought me to Jesus. And I'm a Christian because of the prophecy you gave my sister. Now, two things. Then he said that night, he said, God, I so appreciate the word you gave my sister for me. I want my own word. And I was the first person I called out was him. And God gave him that. Now, here's my point. His sister shook the world. She said, my brother will be saved. And she took that prophecy, prayed it, tell the devil this is where he's going to be. And she proclaimed, don't pray the problem, pray the promise. She prayed the promise over her brother. She even made him listen. Listen to this. And it shook him up. It shook trauma out of him, shook deception out of him. I wonder who God's going to use you to shake up, to reach, to love, to heal, to help, to deliver. We're all called to be difference makers. And, and if you're between a rock and a hard place, you're in the perfect place for God to do a miracle. Yeah, yeah. I know things are tough. When we look at the culture, well, things are tough. You know who is stronger than our culture? God. The problems of our culture are significant, but the strength of our God is greater. The purposes of God are always stronger than the problems of men. And God wants us to shake the world by believing him. Let's just do it. Let's believe God for nations, for cities. Let's believe God for families, for miracles. Let's believe God for whatever terrain and territory and faith promises God gives you. Let's be sharp in our faith. Let's make sure that we don't sit underneath a pomegranate tree waiting for God to do something all the time he's waiting for us to do something. Well, there's revival in Reading. Yeah, and there can be revival anywhere. God didn't choose Reading because Reading was the perfect city. He chose Reading because he found the hungry heart. And he'll move anywhere. <laughs> he'll move anywhere. He'll move in any nation, any place, any people, any person. If they're hungry, and if they have faith, he's the eyes of the Lord, the prophet toward the king. They, 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 they cover the whole earth. They've they move to and fro across the face of the whole earth. God's looking to show himself strong. God, I'm ready. Amen. I have been just visiting your church. I've been deeply challenged to, to reclaim a passion for revival in my city. And we have a measure of things, but I want more. I want more. God has more. I want more. And I'm not going to live without receiving the more. God, thank you. I, I want you just to take a minute because I don't know the, all of the, the culture of Bethel. I just know this. You have a heroic leader. And would you, if you believe in the mission of this church, if you believe in the vision of this church, if you believe this next year is going to be a miracle as far as the 
development of the new property and the finances needed. If you believe that God's brought you here to shake the world, would you stand to your feet and thank God for your amazing pastor, Pastor Bill Johnson. Come on, right now, everyone. Now let's thank God for, thank you God, for Bethel. Thank you God for Pastor Johnson, Pastor Chris, all the team. I just want to say this to you. God's not done. The best is yet to come in this church. The best seasons of harvest, miracles, breakthrough, of cultural transformation, of reformation to the city, to the state. God's not done. And he brought you here to be a part of something so special. You're making history with Jesus. And man, there's just nothing. None of you will regret in heaven, even though it cost you money or your job. or oh, None of you will have a regret for coming here. Lots of people will regret not coming here. In fact, if I would have heard about your church 25 years ago, I'd be sitting right next to you. <laughs> I, I heard about it too late. <laughs> it's a funny story. God, thank you. I'm ready. Use me. I'm ready, God. I'm ready, God. I renew my desire, my passion, my pursuit, my hunger, my determination. Thank you, God, for what you're doing. The, uh, is it okay in the service to come down? No. Am I allowed to leave the stage in the service? Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I, I want to uh, pray for this uh, man right here. Hello, sir. Hey, what's your name? Ian. Ian. Okay. Are, are you with any of these lovely people? Uh, my brother Ian and uh, little Ian's. Lord, thank you for this man. Thank you for this family. <clears throat> I just want to say this, you know, God has, God loves everyone like, like a parent equally. God just likes you a little more. <clears throat> and there is so much joy in God's heart because of the t your testimony. You shouldn't be here. You shouldn't be rocking it for God. You shouldn't be doing what you're doing shouldn't even be in your right mind. You're a miracle man. God fought for you. You've always had such a high acumen, a great mind, a brilliant mind. You've always had this creative capacity to imagine, to think futuristic, all these things in you. And the devil, I saw four powerful events in your life. One, one was like at 11 and a half, just trying to cripple you. But God wouldn't let any of those things stop you from being who he called you to be. God's proud of the way you've stewarded now these last five and a half years. You've stewarded a tough season well. I want to say to you, Brother Ian, it's breakthrough time. It is your breakthrough time. It is your family's breakthrough time. And it was like this idea, like a copyright. There's this idea, this inventive copyrighted thing that the devil's so afraid. God's about to release it to you like a, like a dam breaking. And it's going to change everything. This is the season God trusts you the most. And he's, the Lord's so proud of you. You have all these, it's like you've lived four lives, all these different things you've done well. This season you'll find the greatest joy in. Because you're doing it for God, you're doing it with God. And God's just beginning writing your story. I saw them interviewing you like in a magazine and in the media. And they're talking about how did this happen? That kind of stuff. It's just going to be great. The influence you have is going to bring so many people to Christ. So many people. God's after a generation that doesn't know him. He's after hurting people. And he's going to help them be delivered from, they feel like religion hates them. They just need to know God's love. And God's going to help you so much get this. Something's happening with property. I loosen a property settlement or a property miracle to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and I thank God for it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Worship the Lord with me, everybody. Thank you, Lord, for your uh, beautiful presence with us. Thank you for touching 
all of these world shakers for, for your kingdom. Thank you, God, for what you have for our lives. We honor you. We worship you. Come on, just, just keep loving on him. Keep, God, we, we, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for touching my friend today. Thank you, God, for touching this body. Thank you, God, that you're a miracle-working God. And I ask you, God gave me, young man, a miracle. And I just believe today for God to give you a miracle. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for touching this young man. Thank you, Jesus. You're so good. Yeah, God, you're so good. You, uh, God's literally resurrected you a couple of times from death. It's not even something, you, you have a different attitude toward it because you've had to face it so much. But I declare over you the scripture God gave me 20 years ago. You shall not die, servant live, and declare the works of the Lord. That God's not done in your story. And God brought you back for a purpose and a, a reason, a destiny. And that your heart's going to start dreaming again. Now, something needs to happen. God's released it to happen. So it's like a, there's a medical piece to this that God's determined to give you. So God, thank you for all you have for this amazing young man. We, I bless him and declare your great grace over him. In the name of Jesus. Um, can, can I pray for you, uh, sir? Here. Yeah. How, how you doing? What, what, what's your name? Dan? Are, are, do you have any family here? Mrs. Dan, hey, uh, hello. <clears throat> I just want to say, Dan, God's proud of you. God loves you. God's for you. And you've handled, whenever you got to like, rebuild a business or start over and do things, it's like torturously, <clears throat> you've handled new beginnings so well. I just want to say heaven is breathing on you. And you're going to find so much kind of satisfaction and laughter in this season because God is making a way for you to do things. You have great expertise about health and you're going to make people healthy and God's going to give you all kinds of resources to make that happen. God, thank you for helping Dan and his wife. Thank you for all that you're doing. And God, I thank you. You've always been his father, his friend, and you're going to show off in this season about the things you have for him and the things that you've ordained for him and the pain of his family. It's, it's a lot to carry what's been happening, but God's lifting your heart from the pain of certain things. So God, thank you for touching him. The, the woman that looks like you, Mrs. Dan, God's gonna give a miracle too. And your faith, your trust in God, you've been really holding things together. You've really been an anchor. God's doing a miracle um, for her and for others. So just watch God's working in your family in such a beautiful way. Thank you, God. Every person here that needs a physical healing, would you just raise your hand wherever you are? And I'm going to ask you, church, to help me pray for these uh, beautiful people. If someone around you has their hand raised, let's pray for them now. Father, we pray by the name of Jesus for healing for all of our friends, our brothers and sisters in the massive, powerful, exalted, glorious name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for touching them and healing them right now God thank you God there's nothing you can't do nothing you won't do thank you God thank you Jesus are you guys married yeah so I walked past you and the Lord said tell them it's done I just declare over you it's done miracle to your home miracle to your lives miracles for you God's very proud of you for handling impossibly difficult things by trusting God. But God's not done in your story. So I know about comebacks. I know about miracles. And when I walked past you, I felt one happening. I thank you, God, the miracle season, the comeback season 
is here. And the disappointment of whatever's not happened or did happen, God's just lifting out of you. It's not that you'll stop remembering it happened. It's that it won't hurt anymore. So God, thank you for your great love for these beautiful people. That they've not turned away from you. They're not turned away from each other. And now they're going to see you turn toward them in a miracle way. Thank you, God. <laughs> God, his love is so great. It just fills me with glee. I, I learned a new word this morning, glee from Pastor Bill. Thank you, God. Everybody lift your hands to heaven. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Are, 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 you, uh, are you related to any of these people? Yeah, just, just look like. Uh, so, uh, champion baby, champion mother, champion baby, heart's desire, faith, breakthrough. It took faith for this to happen. And there was a, the hand of God's upon this life because of the faith of the mother. So way to go, mom. You've broken through and you've not seen anything yet. You've just, I mean, you've seen the beauty of a beginning, but you're gonna watch the maturing fulfillment of great things. In your family, the birth, uh, what, what's the name of? Elias. Elias. The birth of Elias has unlocked miracles for your family. It's breakthrough time, it's healing time. I saw two people, one of them was called to the ministry and actually walked away. I saw God to reach out and pull them in. So people that have wandered from faith and people that, have, that are hurting, are coming back. So way to go. It's going to be an amazing season. And this birth means so much because it triggered something. Just like Pastor Bill, just like the guy in the, Jonathan, your faith has shaken things up. And amazing things are going to happen this next season. God, thank you for Elias and the, um, mom and um, everything you're doing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Pa Pastor Bill, just stop me whenever it's time. There's no time in the clock. That's like a miracle. Hey, I'm going to keep going. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Keep worshiping God, everybody. Um, our, um, hi. Our, who's here together? Your, your siblings. And um, you're the oldest? Yes. And these are your, your awesome um, younger siblings. Hmm? You have one more sibling. And I, I just want to say over you, young man, um, you're a walking, breathing miracle. And God's very proud of you. God, you, you have a maturity beyond your years. Sometimes we're mature because life puts stuff on us. And you've handled responsibility so well. And I just want to say this. The, your, your, your family is going to be shocked by these next 10 years of your life because your mind has a genius acumen and God's doing something in your mind with numbers, ideas, and different things. God's doing something significant and you're gonna rock the world by what God does. And the Lord's just so proud of, whenever you do something, you wanna do it really well, you really dig deep into it. In, in faith, it's made you really powerful because you're gonna dig deep into these things and your family's creating great influence and great outcomes. Just way to go. God's super proud of all, of all of you guys, but you're in a great season. You made two decisions in the last year that really pleased God, that they were the right decisions. And so God's with you. You keep walking with him and trusting him. And you're, man, you are breaking curses right and left. And God's very proud of you. God bless this amazing young man in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, 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 tell me your name. Diane. So, so Miss Diane, God. So you're a treasure to Jesus. This morning, I I put on uh, Louis Vuitton cologne because <laughs> a guy in my church gave it to me. So when he gave it to me six months ago, the first thing I did is I went home and Googled it to see how much it cost. I'm like, holy smokes, I should save this for my grandchildren's inheritance. <laughs> but every time I wear it, I just feel a little better. 
the woman that came close to you, you smell like Jesus. And the Lord's very proud of you, how you've stewarded your faith. When people have faith in the midst of sorrow and loss and continuing sorrow and loss, it means so much to Jesus. And the Lord's just very proud of you. Now, let's just believe for a bunch of miracles, okay? Let's just believe for a great season of miracles. Now, here's what God's after. I saw four people in your family disappointed or disaffected because of hardships that God was turning their hearts back to Him. So it's, it's, it's coming home time. It's faith coming home time to your family. And God's after all of them. He's going to do miracles after miracle. The storm and the daughter ends in the name of Jesus. God, I listen miracles to this family in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Lord of the church. Thank you, God, for your hand upon her and all of the, all those that she loves, all those carried in her heart, all those that are so important to both her and you. Thank you, God, for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Are, are, are you, uh, anybody here know each other? You're, you're in school together? The school here, school of ministry? Yeah, so just, uh, um, just all three of you raise your hands. So... <clears throat> There is, there is something, young man, you're going to rock the world. You're going to rock the world, shake the world for Jesus. You don't have to do it. You don't have to do it any other way. God's doing it through the unique properties, gifts, and acumen of your life. You've overcome so much. You've come far. Now watch what God does. Because you're stepping into something. You're stepping into something great. And it's the unfinished business in your family which God is after, which is going to be so profound. God is, God is doing a miracle in your family. God is doing a miracle for people you love. While you were obeying God in this season, God was fighting for you across the country. So miracles are happening back home. Miracles are happening for people you love because of your obedience. And the devil did everything to try to stop you from getting here. But you, gave, you won that fight, and God's very proud of you. God's visiting you. In this next season, God's visiting you in very beautiful, dynamic, and powerful ways. He's visiting the whole school. God's positioning you to be a leader, really important, strategic, invaluable, compassionate, pastoral leader. You just keep going for it, sister. You're going to end up doing all the crazy stuff we're doing, okay? Just keep, just keep doing it, and watch what God does. Amen. Everybody lift your hands to heaven. I think I've gone too long. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we love you, we honor you. I thank you, God, for shaking the world from Bethel. Thank you for all you've done. Thank you for my dear friend, Pastor Bill, Pastor Chris, all the staff. Thank you, God, that the best is yet to come. Hey, it's been such an honor and joy to be with you guys this morning. God, God bless you all. So good. Wow. Praise God. How many of you guys were blessed? Amen. Amen. Hey, if we could have ministry team just make your way forward right now. We want to pray for anybody here who needs a miracle, needs prayer for anything. So if ministry team, if you could make your way forward, go ahead and stay standing. We're going to dismiss you guys. If we got any students in the, in the house, BSSM graduates, staff members, please come and, uh, and we're going to pray with you. Also, if you're here right now and you've not committed your life to Christ, if you've not surrendered your life to Jesus, the Bible says, now is the time of salvation. Amen. And so if you're in this place and you want to give your life to Christ, just raise your hand right now so I can just see you. Just raise it up. Anybody here who's like, you know what? I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to leave behind the old. I want to step into the new. I want what, what this place has. If that's you, just raise your hand up. If you're online, type in the chat, I need Jesus. Somebody raising their hand? I see people pointing. Right over here. Right over here. You raising your hand right there? All right, man. Come. Let's go, bro. And somebody right here? If you just raise your hand, would you just come forward here? I want to pray with you. We want to pray with you. Come on up here. We want to pray. It's a new day. The Bible says that Jesus said, if anybody prays in anything, agreeing on something, it'll be done for you. We're going to pray. This is going to be done for you right now. Come right over here to this banner. Jordan, raise your hand. And he's going to pray with you right here. I'll make my way over there in just a second. It's a new day. Come on. This is awesome. Right here. Yes. So good. Come on. Give God praise for that. That's awesome. 
All right. Bless you guys. We have an encounter night tonight. It's going to be powerful. So if you need prayer, come on up, get prayer. God bless you. Have a great day.